Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you are enjoying our podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. A couple quick notes before we get started with today's episode. First of all, I've received a few responses to my question. I asked listeners to share how they found the podcast, and it definitely provides some interesting insights. Uh, So if you found the podcast within the last few years, I'd love to know how you did, as that will give me some insight on different ways that I can uh, promote the podcast and help to to continue to grow our audience. Also, I did want to let you know that episodes of the podcast are currently being rerun on a community radio station, KWQQ in Farmington, Iowa, which is a community radio station, is running episodes of my shows, and that's Great Detectives of Old Time Radio, Amazing World of Radio, and the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon, over the air in Van Buren County, Iowa, and also on their website at kwqq.com. You can hear my shows Monday through Thursday, uh, from 7 to 10 p.m. Central Time, Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. Central Time, and Saturday and Sunday from 5 to 8 p.m. Central Time. And that's 106.3 FM or 1610 AM if you're in the area. And again at kwqq.com. All right, well now let's get into this week's episode of Mr. Chameleon. The original air date, November 17th, 1948. And the title is The Case of Death and the Blue Peacock. Next, Mr. Chameleon, the Man of Many Faces. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer aspirin. Now let me tell you just who Mr. Chameleon is. A college man, he tried from childhood to live up to the name he bore, Chameleon, by taking on the color of whatever situation in which he found himself, appearing in endless guises, finally entering the police force where he became known as Chameleon, the man of many faces, the underworld's most dreaded man. The listener invariably knows who Mr. Chameleon is no matter which disguise he assumes, but the criminal he's tracking down seldom does. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon in the case of death at the Blue Peacock. Among New York's fine restaurants, the Blue Peacock holds a unique and distinguished place of its own. Occupying the sixth floor of a midtown building, it caters to people of taste and wealth. Otto, the manager, owns it in partnership with his wife, Madame LaRoche. Now the charming Otto is being particularly gracious to a very beautiful girl who is dining alone. Well, Miss Dalton, I'm very happy to see you here at the Blue Peacock this evening. There's no place I'd rather dine, Otto. How is Madame LaRoche? And how is uh, Mr. Phillips? I notice he's not at his piano this evening. Oh, he will be, Miss Dalton. Leslie Phillips is a very fine pianist, Otto. Rosalie, Rosalie, help! Help! What was that? Otto, someone screamed for help. And he called my name. I'm sure he called my name. Now, a few minutes later, a police car pulls up before the entrance to the Blue Peacock building, and the famous detective, Mr. Chameleon, says to Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold... Here we are, Dave. This is the building. 
Blue Peacock Restaurant is on the sixth floor. It sure gets me, Mr. Chameleon. This whole thing is cockeyed. A man falls out of a window of their private dining room up there, and no one can even identify the body. Only I'm not sure he fell. That's why I'm here. Hey, look at this crowd. Yes, let's find out if there's anyone in it uh, who saw this thing happen. I'm Chameleon of Central Headquarters. Did any of you people here actually see the man fall out of the window? That's the window up there. See, the one that's open? That's the window he jumped from. He didn't jump. He was pushed. He was deliberately forced out of that window. What was that? Huh? What were you saying, young man? What do you mean, that man was pushed from the window? He was. I saw it, Mr. Chameleon. I've been waiting to tell the police. I'm glad I got a chance to tell you what I saw before you go in there. Tell me everything you know. That poor devil was pushed. There's no question about it. Two pair of hands pushed him through that window up there. I saw them. Could you identify the people who did it? No. No, Mr. Chameleon, I, I couldn't do that. I only saw the hands. How did you happen to notice it? Well, I, I had some friends dining here at that restaurant tonight at the Blue Peacock. And as I was passing, I automatically glanced up. And there he was in the window. He screamed as they pushed him out. What's your name? My, my name? I'd rather not say. Call me, call me John Smith. Well, Mr. Smith... You'll have to be held as a material witness. Oh, no, you can't hold me. Oh, I... yes, we can. Dave, you take Mr. Smith down to central headquarters while I go upstairs to the Blue Peacock and question its owners, Otto and Madame LaRoche. Right, Mr. Chameleon. Otto, Madame LaRoche. What's been happening here? Oh, Mr. Chameleon, it's dreadful that you should be here like this. I mean, in this capacity of the police detective. The reputation of my restaurant... Get to the point, Otto. Yes, Otto, as your wife says, please get to the point. Where were you and your staff at the time of the man's death? Well, I was here in the dining room talking to Miss Dalton, Miss Rosalie Dalton, a perfectly lovely girl. She comes here often to dine with friends, mostly men. She's a beautiful girl, but beautiful like Dresden China. Mr. Chameleon, that is what you call irrelevant. It may not be, madame, if this girl, Rosalie, is linked to the man's death. Oh, she isn't, she isn't. She's not connected in any way, Mr. Chameleon. But I was talking to her when we, we heard this man cry out. From the private dining room, which wasn't even in use tonight. That's right, dear. How the man got in there, I don't know. And you had never seen him before, Otto? Never, never. I've never seen him here before. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, it's too awful. What will this do to my business? Even my waiters. Already two of them have quit. Well, they won't quit until we finish questioning them, Otto. Madame Laroche, where were you at the time this man fell or was pushed from the window? Minding my own business. How delightful. But uh, where were you at the time you were minding it? In my office, Mr. Chameleon. Leslie Phillips was with me. Leslie Phillips. That uh, young pianist who plays here during the dinner hour. What's he like? Yeah, he's a pianist. Exactly. Doesn't tell me much about his character. Character? What should I know about his character? He's talented. That's all that interests us, Mr. Chameleon. Perhaps. At any rate, he seems to have an alibi. I realize that in a place like this restaurant, it's uh, difficult to place everyone at a given moment. But someone beside the dead man was in that private dining room. We have a witness who says he saw the man being pushed out. But that's impossible. Uh, Mr. Chameleon, may I speak to you? Yes. Miss Dalton, my dear Miss Dalton, I thought you'd gone home. No, Otto, I stayed to see Mr. Chameleon. Why? One moment, Madame LaRoche. I'll do the questioning. Miss Dalton? Why do you wish to see me? Because I was sure Otto would try to protect me, Mr. Chameleon. He'd think he was doing me a favor by not involving me in this... this awful thing. Did Otto tell you that the dead man called my name? No. Otto didn't tell me that. Mr. Chameleon, I saw no reason to involve the young lady. Besides, I wasn't even sure that he called her name. Well, I was. He screamed, Rosalie. I went down to the sidewalk to see the... the body, Mr. Chameleon. It, it was a man I knew. A man who'd wanted me to marry him. What was his name? John Crane. You had turned him down? Yes, I had. I always felt John was a bad influence on my younger brother, Ted. He threatened to follow me here tonight, but I never dreamed he would. Well, then it was a suicide. He was disappointed in love. But certainly, Mr. Chameleon. And he wanted Miss Dalton to know about it. He not only must kill himself, he must do it loudly. Maybe... But I repeat, we have a witness who claims John Crane was murdered, was pushed from the window. Miss Dalton, what does your brother look like? 
Ted? Well, he's tall and very thin with coppery red hair, a little like mine, and... Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Chameleon. What is it, Dave? This is Detective Sergeant Arnold. Dave, what's the matter? He got away. Our witness, he sucked me, and I went down. By the time I pulled my gun, he was gone in the crowd. I couldn't shoot. There were too many people on the street. Did you go after him? There was nothing to go after, Mr. Chameleon. He must have ducked into a doorway. We don't even know his name. John Smith certainly wasn't his name. Certainly not. But unless I am very much mistaken, his name is Ted Dalton. Ted? Ted? Yes, Miss Dalton. From the way you described him, I have every reason to believe our missing witness is your brother. He is the man who saw your friend John Crane pushed out of the window up here. Mr. Chameleon, it makes me sick that I let that guy, that witness, get away. He took me by surprise. We may get him, Dave. If he is Rosalie Dalton's brother, Ted, he may turn up at her place. We'll have her apartment building watched. Quite a uh, layout they have here at the Blue Peacock. Lounge, cocktail room, that private dining room. And uh, this must be Otto and Madame's office. Hey, who's that? By the desk. That's Leslie Phillips, the pianist. Mr. Phillips. Yes? Oh, hello, Mr. Chameleon. I thought you were in the private dining room. (laughs) You seem to be everywhere at once. What are you doing in Madame LaRoche's desk? Oh, it's quite all right. She gave me permission to open her money drawer. I'm changing a $10 bill for two fives. I heard you lost a witness who claimed that man's death wasn't suicide, that he was pushed out of the window up here. Personally, I don't believe it. I think he jumped. I'm afraid we don't see eye to eye on this, Mr. Phillips. I am convinced the man was pushed out of the window, murdered. The witness did get away in the crowd, but I can tell you that we will find him again. Oh, I'm sure you will. A famous detective like you must have quite a time living up to his reputation. I'm surprised you haven't turned up here in disguise yet. Oh, delightful idea, Mr. Phillips. I hear your disguises are quite amazing. If you can believe everything you hear... Why, that fresh young punk, I ought to... easy, Dave. You got a uh, $10 bill? I seem to have nothing but fives and a 20. Oh, yeah, sure, right here. Mr. Chameleon, what are you doing? Replacing Leslie Phillips' $10 bill with yours. This is purely a hunch, Dave, purely a hunch. But I would like to take a closer look at his $10. (laughs) And a short time later, at Central Headquarters, in the office of the Commissioner of Police, we hear Mr. Chameleon saying... And here it is, Commissioner. Isn't it a masterpiece? One of the best counterfeit bills I have ever laid eyes on. So that's the story, is it, Chameleon? Counterfeit bills. What'll we do about Phillips? Pick him up? No, no, no. No, let him stay where he is for the present. You think our fancy pianist at the Blue Peacock Restaurant didn't know this was a counterfeit? I think he did. And Phillips was passing off a counterfeit bill on Otto and Madame LaRoche. Well, I don't know yet. You see, maybe that's a uh, sideline with Phillips, just as passing bad checks is a sideline with Ted Dalton. You mean Rosalie Dalton's brother? Yes, the one who got away. Our missing witness. They're quite a contrast, these two, Ted and his sister. They were left orphaned in their teens. They came from a very nice family. They were practically destitute. And Rosalie went to work. She'd been a secretary, fashion model... Admired by everyone who knows her. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, nobody had a good word for Ted. He wouldn't work. Lived off his sister, people say. Well, the dead man, John Crane, and Ted Dalton were two of a kind. But, Chameleon, what was John Crane doing in a swanky restaurant like the Blue Peacock? Well, if I knew the answer to that one, I'd have the solution of this case in the palm of my hand. Commissioner, I am pretty sure that young man, John Crane, didn't kill himself for uh, unrequited love. Rosalie Dalton may think so, but I don't. You think it's murder tied up with counterfeiting, eh, Chameleon? Well, I'm toying with the idea that the Blue Peacock could be the headquarters for a gang of counterfeiters. They might even have that equipment there. Yes, go on. Well, Dave and I went over the place with a fine-tooth comb. There might be a hidden room where they keep that equipment. If there is, we didn't find it. What next, Chameleon? I'm going into that restaurant in disguise. To get one piece of evidence I need, I'll go in disguise as a waiter. 
A waiter? Mm-hmm. It's the only way I can get in. I've got to work fast. <clears throat> Hello? Is this Mr. Chameleon? Yes. Miss Dalton? Yes. Mr. Chameleon, something horrible has happened. When I got home, I found my apartment in disorder. The, the, the bedroom is on a courtyard. And the bedroom window was open. Yes? Mr. Chameleon, my brother... My brother Ted was lying in the courtyard. When I got down there, he was dead. He jumped or fell from that window. Or he was pushed. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm so frightened. I can't think. Don't leave your apartment, Miss Dalton. I'll be up there myself in a few minutes. And don't let anyone in until I get there. Commissioner, my only witness has been murdered. Ted Dalton? Mm-hmm. At his sister's apartment. I'm going up to see her now. <laughs> Mr. Chameleon and the case of death at the Blue Peacock continues in just a moment. Next time you want relief from an ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain, remember that one thing you can take with complete confidence is genuine Bayer aspirin. You can take it confident of amazingly fast relief, for Bayer aspirin is actually ready to go to work in two seconds. And you could take it confident of really dependable relief, for no other pain reliever can match its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. Don't ever forget this unmatched record. It's important because it means you can take Bayer aspirin sure in the knowledge that it will bring you the gentle relief that's important to your health. So don't experiment with drugs that have not been proved by years of successful use. For the two most important kinds of relief, fast relief and dependable relief, do as millions do. Be sure with Bayer aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle, and you get Bayer aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the case of death at the Blue Peacock. It is some time later, and Mr. Chameleon is at the apartment of Rosalie Dalton. Rosalie's brother, Ted, has just been murdered, apparently because he witnessed a previous murder at the Blue Peacock, a fashionable restaurant. Mr. Chameleon turns as the door opens and Rosalie comes out, dabbing at her eyes. Forgive me for keeping you waiting, Mr. Chameleon. I I was in a state of prostration. The shock of my brother Ted's death. Oh, don't apologize, Miss Dalton. As I told you, I'm so terribly frightened. Well, we can't blame you for that. Miss Dalton, I am going to warn you of something and also take you into my confidence. The Blue Peacock Restaurant is a hangout for counterfeiters. What? I'm sure of it. I'm also quite sure that your brother was involved with them. Oh, no. And so was your friend John Crane. But, but Otto and Madame LaRoche, they couldn't be in anything like that. Oh, yes, they're right there in the picture, along with Leslie Phillips, the pianist. Unfortunately, so far, I have no evidence to convict them. Then how in the name of heaven can... What makes you suspect them of such a thing? Counterfeiting. I caught Leslie Phillips getting rid of counterfeit bills by placing them in a cash drawer where change is made for the customers. I also saw Otto tampering with your purse. Mr. Chameleon, you're not serious. Well, at least I saw him pick it up and lay it down when I was questioning you. Uh, Look in your purse right now and see if you find anything. Well, I have it right here, but I I don't understand. No, here's my compact, my coin purse, every... That's strange. What is? There are two new bills. Two ten-dollar bills. I'm positive I didn't have these. The ones I had were old and worn. These are new. May I see them, please? Miss Dalton, these are counterfeit bills. They're like the ones Leslie Phillips had in his possession. Otto deliberately planted them on you. But why, Mr. Chameleon, why? To incriminate you. Me? Why, certainly. Very, very clever of Otto. If the police had found these bills on you, you would have been arrested as a passer of counterfeit money. Oh, no. And not only that. You might have been suspected of being involved in those murders. I can't believe it. I I just can't... And furthermore, Miss Dalton, if Otto's plan fails, it's quite possible that he'll kill you, too, and make it look like suicide. He'll push me out of a window, too. What am I going to do? Help me. Please, Mr. Chameleon, help me. I intend to. Miss Dalton, can you keep a secret, a very grave secret? Yes. Yes, of course. I am going into the Blue Peacock, disguised as a waiter a French waiter named Louis Journet. Otto needs waiters. Disguised as a waiter? But, Mr. Chameleon, that's dangerous. Well, naturally it's going to be dangerous, but I'm hoping I shan't have to do it for long. 
I am convinced that the evidence that those people are counterfeiters lies somewhere in the Blue Peacock restaurant. I intend to find it. You see, as a cop, I failed. As a waiter, who is always there, who actually works there, I may succeed in catching the murderer. Won't be easy to fool Otto and Madame LaRoche. They're very much on their guard. But I shall do my best. As Mr. Chameleon predicted, it is not easy to fool Otto and Madame LaRoche. And now, in his disguise as the French waiter, Louis Journet, Mr. Chameleon stands facing the two of them in Madame's office. And his sleek black hair, his sleek mustache, his whole dapper person is being scrutinized carefully until Otto says to his wife, What do you think? I think no, Otto. But Madame Laroche, I am a first-class waiter. The very finest, I have been told. Who told you? You have no credentials in New York. Chicago is a big city too, Madame Laroche. You have heard of the famous uh, Café Blanc there? Yes. Good. I worked there three years. I am Louis of the Café Blanc. Everybody know me. Uh, Monsieur Otto, if you engage me, you will never regret it. Such service, such a feeling for the finest in food. Yes, I... you have that. You have knowledge of food. Yes. What goes on here? Leslie, will you kindly knock some sense into Otto? He's about to hire this waiter about whom he knows nothing. That is not so. I am a first-class waiter. You act as if I were a criminal. On the contrary. What's your name? Louis Journet. On the contrary, Mr. Journet, we're afraid you might be. You're afraid I might be who? Uh, or what? Never mind. Anyway, Otto, maybe you shouldn't hire him. Indeed. Well, let me tell you something, Leslie Phillips. I still run this restaurant. You just play the piano here. A little more than that, Otto. Maybe so, but neither you nor my wife can dictate yet. I need this waiter. I am short-handed. I intend to engage him, at least for tonight. Tomorrow we shall see. Thank you, Monsieur Otto. I go to work at once. May I take your order, sir? Huh? Oh, no, no. I'm just looking over the joint. Uh, maybe I will have an order of scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs at the Blue Peacock? Uh, really, Detective Sergeant Donald? What? Mr. Chameleon, that's you. Yes, keep your voice down, Dave. Leslie Phillips, the pianist, is Zionist. So help me, I didn't recognize you in that disguise. So you got the job as waiter, eh? Mm hmm I've been circulating around here for three hours now, and I picked up some important evidence, Dave. And I... But, monsieur, you are the scrambled eggs at the Blue Peacock. Is anything wrong? Oh, good evening, Detective Sergeant Arnold. Hello, Madame LaRoche. I was just having a little argument with this character here. So I noticed. Madame, this man wants scrambled eggs. Then give it to him. The customer is always right, Louis. Very well, madame. I hope you enjoy your eggs, Detective Sergeant Arnold. And... Give our regards to Mr. Chameleon when you see him. I'll do that. Mr. Chameleon, do you think she knows you? I've no idea, Dave, but I do know something. I found the entrance to that hidden room where we think the counterfeiting is going on. What? I'm sure I have. I've got a pass key. You and I will come back later tonight, Dave, when the restaurant is closed and see if I'm not right. <laughs> Here's the private dining room. You sure everyone's gone home, Mr. Chameleon? Yes. I suspect they'll be coming back. Coming back? Mm hmm. Rather counting on it, Dave. The gathering of the gang. Here's the electric light switch. You gonna turn on the lights? No. This flashlight's all we need. When I was passing the door this afternoon, I saw Leslie Phillips turning this light bulb. It struck me as odd. He was turning it to the right, and he stopped when he saw me. Suppose we turn it to the right and see what happens. Mr. Chameleon, that panel on the wall slid back. Yes, it certainly has, Dave. There's a room beyond it. Come on. Holy mackerel, look at that, will you? A printing press, just like you thought. 
press that turns out counterfeit money. We've got the goods on him, Mr. Chameleon. Not yet, Dave, not quite. Remember, it's not only counterfeiting we're investigating, but murder. Otto, you're crazy. Listen. Not crazy, just worried. It's Madame LaRoche and Otto. They've come back all right. Close the panel quickly, Dave. Here, Dave, let's you and I get behind the serving table. Well, aren't you going to run them in? We've got the evidence, Mr. Chameleon. What are we waiting for? We'll see, I hope. But if we... Shh, shh, shh. Tell you, Otto, you're crazy coming back here this way. What do you expect to find? I don't know, I don't know. But I couldn't sleep. I wanted to see if everything was all right. Where is that light switch? Now, you satisfied? The panel's closed. No one's been here. I feel uneasy, uneasy. I had to make sure. What was that? What? A footstep in the corridor. Somebody followed us in. Oh, you're dreaming, Otto. No. Then it's someone with a key. Leslie, is that you? Leslie! <gasps> what are you doing here, Miss Dalton? You didn't tell us you were coming here tonight. What are you doing with that gun? Stop pointing that gun at us. No, keep away from us. What's the matter with you? You look as if you wanted to kill us. Say something, Miss Dalton. All right, Otto, I'll say something. I have plenty to say to both of you. Did you really think you could double-cross me and get away with it? Double-cross you? Who said such a thing? That detective, Mr. Chameleon. He saw Otto plant those counterfeit bills in my purse. I did? I planted bills in your purse? He's lying, Miss Dalton. They were there. You wanted the police to find them there. You hoped it would make the police suspect me. Oh, you're mad. I've never double-crossed you. I've never disobeyed you. You're the leader, the brains. I have always obeyed you. Then open that window. What? What, Miss Dalton? You heard me. Open that window. Miss Dalton, you can't do this. You wouldn't dare kill my husband. I ordered John Crane killed. I killed my own brother. Anyone who gets in my way, anyone I kill. You are mad. I've said you were mad for a long time now. Open that window, Otto. Open that window. Now, Otto, you're going out that window. I've got a gun. Go on. No, no. I've got a gun. Put down that gun. Put it down, Miss Walton, uh, or I'll have to shoot. Mr. Chameleon, I thought Leslie Phillips had killed you. Yes, I was sure that you tip off somebody in this restaurant that I was here disguised as the new French waiter. That's why I confided in you. You lying cop! And that fool Leslie Phillips didn't kill you. Don't worry, Rosalie. I'm here right now for that purpose. Do I give Chameleon a bullet or the window? <laughs> ah! I've got a gun, Mr. Chameleon. Good work, Dave. You killed me, Chameleon. Unfortunately not, Phillips. Hands up, all of you. I arrest you, Rosalie Dalton, for the murders of John Crane and your brother Ted. You, Otto, and Madame LaRoche, and you, Leslie Phillips, as her accomplices in murder and counterfeiting. You made a fool of me, Chameleon. And you, Otto, you double-crosser, planting that counterfeit money in my bag. Just I... another police trick, uh, Rosalie. Otto planted nothing in your bag. I, Chameleon the cop, uh, planted those uh, phony $10 bills in it myself. What? I wanted to make you suspicious of your confederates and lead to just such a scene as we've had here tonight. A scene that proves that you... The first person I suspected are the leader of this whole slimy gang and an accomplished murderess as well. Uh, Dave, you'd better ring headquarters and tell them to send out the big wagon. I'm afraid there's not room enough in our car for them all to be comfortable. And I think it was Rosalie all the time, Mr. Chameleon. Yes. Well, she's not the first beautiful murderess we've taken in, Dave. <laughs> And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Here's how to relieve a common early morning headache quickly. Instantly you get up, take two Bayer aspirin tablets with water, and chances are by the time you finish dressing, your headache is gone. Bayer aspirin works quickly because it starts to disintegrate within two seconds after you take it. You can see this amazing two-second disintegrating action with your own eyes by dropping a Bayer aspirin tablet in a glass of water. What it does in the water, it does in your stomach. And because it's ready to go to work almost at once, you get really fast relief. In addition, you get dependable relief. 
Of all pain relievers, none can match Bayer Aspirin's record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. So be sure to buy Bayer Aspirin. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at the same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Case of Murder in the Dark. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson, with dialogue by Marie Baumer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. A special announcement. The sensational Lion's Toothpaste Tech Toothbrush Bargain Offer your druggist is featuring is going fast. It's a 79 cent value for only 59 cents. So to save money and get two excellent products for cleaning and brightening your teeth, waste no time. The list price for the large size tube of Lion's Toothpaste and the Tech Toothbrush is 79 cents. But right now, you can get both for only 59 cents. So buy this bargain combination tonight. Tomorrow, sure. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Case of Murder in the Dark next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. The murderer's brother learned the hard way. You can't phone in an anonymous tip in person. Call me John Smith doesn't work where you're standing right in front of the police. Now, I, one problem I have is listening to Chameleon's solution. He said the murderess was the first person he suspected, which makes his telling her that her brother was the witness uh, a pretty horrible mistake. Uh, there's a good reason why people not involved in doing the investigation should be on a strict need-to-know basis. Then again, random witnesses escaping from Dave Arnold wasn't a moment that would win uh, him a medal. I do have to appreciate Chameleon's waiter disguise. It's not a perfect accent, but given how many dodgy French accents uh, we hear during the golden age of radio, and how many you'll even hear to this day, to be honest, it definitely shows why Swenson was viewed as a master of these sort of dialect roles. Listener comments and feedback now, and we have a comment from Angel who writes, Mrs. Chameleon was the brains behind the inscrutable police creature. She was always present, but never visible. Oh yes, Mr. C was a confirmed bachelor. Mrs. C was his mommy. Hey, these are facts. I think this is what's known as headcanon, but thanks so much for the comment over there on YouTube, Angel. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to BookGeek28, Patreon supporter since December of 2021, currently supporting the podcast at the Seamus level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support. And that will do it for today. If you're enjoying this podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software and be sure to rate and review the podcast wherever you download it from. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Mr. Chameleon, but join us back here tomorrow for the conclusion of this week's Yours Truly Johnny Dollar Serial, where... He hasn't issued one check on her account since he took it over ten days ago. So if this thing is hers, explain it all to me, will you? The way it is. Uh, I want another drink. Yeah, you're right, Johnny. There wasn't any check. Miss Wendover called me a couple of hours ago and said if I didn't have this thing back to her tonight, she'd call a load of cops and come out and tear us to join her parts. She sounded like she'd do it, too. I mean, well, you, you matter. You, you can't tell what she'll do from one minute to the next. Screw her, you know.
Not so screwy if she dropped 5000 and left that. And now she gets it back for nothing. I just want to get it off my hands. If she came out here with a cop, I'd be closed for the season. And I'm getting old. Hey, you, know, you know where she lives? Mm-hmm. I was there earlier tonight. Yeah, take the ice store and I'll chalk it up to experience, huh? Then you can grab a cab back and come on back out here and I'll see that you have a good time on the house. How about it? I'll take it to her. But I won't come back here, Sam. Oh, Skyline Feely, them guys, huh? They worry you. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash greatdetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.